Welcome to Ross Flatbox. Today we're going to revisit a, an original pattern of mine. Uh, go over how we tie it. This is the squirrel's nest nymph. We start off with a standard scud hook or a caddis merger, either one, and a gold bead. Uh, we're going to start our fly with 6 aught olive dun uni thread and start off right behind the bead. I tie this with wire to lock it in and without depending on how heavy you want it. Standard pattern. Um, standard pattern usually without uh, in recent years and I wait to adjust on the, on the leader. And you're going to bring your thread down to about the midway point of the bend of the hook and then bring it back forward. And the first material you're going to tie in is fine gold wire. I start it up under the bead, help put it in place, and work my thread back again to the end. And we'll stow that wire to keep it out of, out of the way. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to form a dubbing loop about four inches and we're going to wrap that back beginning and then bring our thread back up to about one bead length behind the bead and with that dubbing loop we will give it a little wax I'm going to use a little wax because we're using squirrel I'm going to use natural squirrel. It is spiky. It is a little harder to dub uh, without a loop and without wax. So I do not fight it. I just go with what makes it easiest to apply. And once we have our our loop. We'll pull it tight, grab it with the hackle pliers, and twist it. Since this is the small loop, we can just use the hackle pliers instead of a dubbing tool to twist it. And what I like to do is get it started twisting, and then with the wax applied, I'll just give a counter twist with my hands, my fingers. And then we'll apply just a little bit more. I dubbed a little bit short up here. You can add and subtract a little bit without a problem when you're using wax. This is a spiky body. And you're not going to build it up real big, you're just going to put one layer of just one in front of the other, make sure you got dubbing material. And I've made sure, depending on what size hook you're tying with, four inches will cover anything. This will be, you know, a little bit excess here. But we'll cut that off. It's not that big of a issue. And we're going to bring this right up to just short of the bead. I'd rather have it a little bit longer into the thorax than uh, than not. And we'll tie that off. And then we'll grab our wire. And we'll wrap that over. Give that ribbed effect. Mm -hmm. 
and we'll take that up into the thorax area as well and tie it off up there I said this is a spiky body and we'll bring our thread back to a little over a a bead length behind. And the next material you're going to tie in is a rust brown or fiery brown rab or uh, by it. Goose or turkey work. I tie these in crisscross over the top. You want to bring the length to about the end of the hook. You don't want to extend beyond the end of the hook. Get them in place. And the last material you're going to tie in is pe Peacock Ice Dub. You won't need too much of it. And I just twist this on. Usually after doing the dubbing loop I got enough wax in my fingers that I can uh, it'll just spin right on the thread. And we're going to give our thorax Nice ice dub build up. And quick whip finish. And there it is squirrel's nest. I'll trim some of it a little bit because this is a very buggy pattern. It'll pick out quick in the water. And then to finish the fly we'll give a dab of Sally's on the head wraps to finish it. And there it is, the squirrel's nest nymph. Very productive pattern for me year round. I said you can weight the body to lock the bead in place, make it a little bit heavier. Or you can uh, choose to adjust with split shot, which I do more often than not. This is a great pattern for me, has been for some time. Hope this adds to your box. Good luck. See you on the water.